Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Go on, what? Yeah, yeah, I think it will be. I think it will be, honestly. I think, I think it'll be pay-per-view. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a few things. Spent two was about yesterday. Spent two? Spent the mother. Money? Yeah, it was about yesterday. I just, I just said to him, uh, no one's interested, Spencer. Five years too late, so... Just gotta put him in your plate, the place, I'm happy with me. And they start talking about stuff like that. Why is Spencer Oliver, alright, coming out with stuff like that? Why is he doing that? Why? Why, these people, right, are the same people that go to after parties and they're saying that fight should have been five years ago. So let me just say this. Anybody, anybody else who I know, right, who works in media, don't tell me that that fight should have been five years ago and then go on telly and say something else because I will not put up with that. You will be exposed if you come near me chatting knackers. You will, well let me tell you this right, it's people who have an opinion right and they want to tell me and I ain't got a problem with that, but don't go out, tell me that and then go on there and say something else because I don't have that, I don't have that, there's boxing managers, who, there's boxing managers in this area right, let me tell you this, and they know who they are, local South Yorkshire managers, there's trainers, there's even promoters who will go out there, they say one thing and then they go on Sky and say another. In my opinion, they are monitor lizards. Crawl out of that hole that you're stuck in, you monitor lizard. And they know who they are. And you know what people say, who is it? And I say, it's the one with ginger hair. People need to have an opinion. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. You know, you know they'll sell it as they know you broke your arm when it happens. They'll be selling it as can't marry a car without boxing Canelo until you got knocked out. Kill Brook without boxing, uh, what's his name? Errol Spence before injury and Triple G. And they're both more experienced now. They still have to come in our order. They're both more experienced. That's what the Sky Sports are coming out of. How can you sell Kel Brook and Amir Khan as a £25 pay-per-view? How can you sell that? How? They're both past the best, right? How can they sell it? What are they going to do? Flip the table? Intense beef? How can they sell that? They'll find a way of still be doing it. Listen, that fight as now, he's now embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah, five, five years ago, it would, it would probably be his fight to make it British boxing, but I don't, I don't think anyone's interested now, then. Do you know, three, do you know, three years ago, right, Dennis's dad died three years ago. And, uh, it was Amir Khan's birthday, around right about Christmas. So, him and Asif went to see him. And they spoke numbers, Dennis and Asif then went to see Terry Brook, is it? And Kel. And uh, they then went to see Eddie at Joshua's gym opening in London. And do you know what? The numbers spoke about then, right? Kel Brook not back because I'm here were getting more money, right? So fair enough. Now, Kel Brook will take less than that offer. He'll take less than that, right? Just to get the money and the people around him will take it because desperate people do desperate things. Now, Kel Brook might not be desperate for money, but the people around him are always going to want more, aren't they? Yeah. Trainers won't pay, managers won't pay, promoters won't pay, Pimp, pimps. Dominic Ingalls a pimp. He's got them all crushed into that house, hasn't he, Nick? Over the road from him. He keep his eye on them, can't he? Get them rent checks coming in. Yeah. Pimps. Pimps. 
Yeah, I'll have scrambled egg on toast, Dominic. He's there with his book, in it, Writing it down. Barry Galahad, scrambled egg toast, Tuesday 23rd. So that when Barry gets paid this week, and he'll be getting a bill for all them scrambled eggs on toast, and all that chiropractic, and all that massages, they'll all be going on his bill. All the lot, trust me. That's how it works, pimps. They are pimps. Yeah. You should leave fighters alone. People should get in boxing for the love of the sport. Which brings me to all them doormen who work at amateur shows and take money. You should be ashamed of yourselves and you know who you are. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Yeah, and all you judges and all you refs, you should be ashamed of yourselves taking money from amateur shows. <sniffs> Off with their heads. <laughs> wrong, mate, it's wrong. People have got their hands in the cookie jar, they can't help themselves. It's a cesspit. It's a cesspit. Kids put in the livestock line. And you've got people taking out at pot. Pimps, a lot of them. Pimps, off with their heads. Yeah, but it's like if I were to push you, I'd also say, yes or no, do you think it'll happen this year? I'm a car against Kel Brook. And you had to give a yes or no answer. What, what, what would you say? You I'd say, yeah, at Christmas. Christmas? Yeah. 25 quid. Where do you think it'll happen? Also, Arena. Uh, well, a pair of them have got attitudes, haven't they, towards each other. Yeah. Amy had wanted in Bolton, wouldn't he? Yeah. He'd want to pick the ring size, which would be a big ring, wouldn't it, for his style. Yeah, he'd want to pick his gloves, he'd want to come out second, and he'd want the lion's share. And because he's been messed about, he'd probably want that little bit more than what he offered last time because Kel and his team are now desperate, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, he can go anywhere in the world and get a big fight, can't he? Yeah, Kel Brooks is chasing that big fight, aren't he? Who's Kel Brooks' best win? Kel Brooks' best win? I'd probably say his best win is Sean Potter, and after that, he's struggling, aren't you? Yeah, who's his second best win? Frankie Gavin. Possibly Frankie Gavin, maybe uh, maybe Zarafa. Maybe Zarafa. Maybe Senchenko. Senchenko, yeah. But after that, he's had a career that's been messed about. He's famous for losing against Golovkin and Errol Spence. Yeah. And that's the cold, harsh reality of boxing. They ruined a kid that could have ruled for years at Welterweight. Ruined him. The Med Minsby out of him, buy and mash, bubble and squeak. Med Minsby out of him. Leaves a bad taste in my mouth. That's basically it in a nutshell, isn't it, really? Well, I don't really know much about weights and stuff, but I know this, right? Fighters are not superheroes, right? For example, would you put Manny Pacquiao in with, in with Golovkin? No. What would you say if Floyd Mayweather fought Golovkin? I'd say we're crazy. So, Kel Brook were a world champion at welterweight, the same yeah. world champion as Mayweather and Pacquiao. So why should Kel Brook fight Triple G, Golovkin, but, Golov but Mayweather and Mackie Pacquiao, their managers wouldn't let him. So why did Kel Brook's manager and trainer put him in 
with Golovkin. What does that say about Kell Brook's team and his promoter? Well, to me, to me, it says they're after one thing, and uh, that's money, isn't it? Simple as that. This is how I look at it, right? Boxing is the only sport where you can be living in a council house on a Monday, and then on, a, on the following Monday, you can be a world champion, you could get a phone call to say that you rank number nine, but the, the others in front of you have knocked a world title fight back. The opponent for the world title's injured. Can you take the fight for two million? You say yes, please, you win a world title. That's it's the only sport that can do that. But it's the only sport where the lions are controlled by rats. Yeah. You see where I'm coming from? A lion is a boxer and he's told what to do by a rat. Like Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn can come to you and say, Will you do me a favour and fight Golovkin? We'll give you so many million, and if you lose, you've still got your world title at welterweight. Why didn't they think what would happen to Kell Brook if he got beat? He got beat badly. Don't forget, they threw the towel in and quit. And he only had a couple of rounds of it, hadn't he? Yeah. Now, this is how I look at it, right? Once they put him in with, with Golovkin, I set about him, didn't I? I mean, you know what my opinion's like. And everybody said, ah, oh, no, Kel's a beast, Kel's a beast. Well, Kel didn't look a beast on the night, did he? Because we have weight divisions for a reason. Like I said, fighters are not superheroes like Spider-Man or Iron Man or Superman. The human beings. We have weight divisions, weight classes, to protect people that are bigger than other people. A middleweight, naturally, is going to carry more power than a welterweight. In some cases, it might not. It depends on his style. But Golovkin's style is he's a power puncher who knocks people out. Kel Brook wasn't exactly knocking people out. A welterweight at the top level, was he? He didn't knock Porter out, did he? Am I right in saying that that fight got off into Chris Eubank first? Chris Eubank Jr. and then he turned it down and then Golovkin and then Kel Brook turns it. He turned it down and then Eddie Earl. Well, you know what Hartman Strikes Back said on his video, don't you? He said that Kel Brook were going around saying he'd have that fight. Not true. Kel Brook were technically saying he'd fight anybody. He didn't necessarily mean Golovkin, but Eddie Earl put it on him, didn't he? Because yeah. Canelo would fought Khan, hadn't he? I think, uh, I think Eddie was just desperate to work with Triple G at the time, wasn't he? Of course he was. Wanted to work with him and get him a big check and show him how good he is. That's all. He used Kale Brook as a sacrificial lamb. But he were going to do it to Chris Eubank Jr. Because the father and his father don't get on, do they? No. And look what they did to Chris Eubank Jr. They protected him for years, didn't they? Then once he got beat against Collins, what did they do? Dropped him, didn't they? Yeah, that's it. No more use to him. Now, Lee Page got beat against Kevin Alexander. What happened after that? Same thing, wasn't it? It's a harsh reality. Eddie Hearn's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. It doesn't all end up like Carl Froch and Bellew. But let me tell you this, he didn't protect Carl from anybody. No. Bell, you had g gifts, didn't he? Yeah, he did, to be fair. I mean, Carl went for it Super 6, wasn't he? So, he had to find the best anyway, didn't he? But yeah. Tony Bell, like, like you say, Tony Bell, you know what I mean? Yeah, there really be a champion, did he? One of the Bell. Uh, beat David A twice. Well, you say, obviously, you're a nice seller to him, but what Tony I'd say what it's only really in the sprint is to uh, master that. David A came back right, and he fooled us all, he fooled me. Yeah. Fooled me, David A. Yeah, he knocked over a few stiffs on Dave channel, didn't he? Yeah, he fooled me, mate. And the day, right? We all thought Tony Bell you would get murdered, and then it, as it unfolded, I mean, oh my god. What were, what were all that as it unfolded? Yeah. But that's the way it's going, that's boxing in 2020 now, isn't it? 
Listen, mate, what you're going to get soon, you're going to get all these YouTubers, they're going to end up with uh, Colleen Rooney against Jamie Vardy's missus on pay per view. Yeah. They're just going to abuse the sport now. It's all the case, it's just a question, right? Of getting them pay per views out. That's all it is. It's greed, greed, and more greed, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Well, I think John Ryder against Callum Smith is not a pay per view, it's a great Saturday night fight. Yeah. Like if they put that on pay per view, we might as well pack up and go home. But John Ryder, I like him, he's got a good attitude and he's a good person as well. You know, robbed in that first fight. Yeah, but I think that in the rematch, we usually see, he usually goes, I think Callum beats him in rematch. I'm not sure, to be honest, I'm not sure. Have you seen that video of Joe Gallagher when, uh, when Elijah Saunders' name gets mentioned, he, he looks down at his shoes, doesn't he? It looks like someone's just told him his cat's died. He did not want to know, does he? Billy what? Joe Saunders, but no, yeah. Billy Joe didn't want to fight who? Well, Callum Smith struggles with southpaws, doesn't he? Yeah, I think Billy Joe Saunders will beat Callum Smith quite easily, but that's just my opinion. But, uh, Callum Smith's the big version of Lemieux. Yeah. I, I think he's, I think he needs to move up Callum Smith. I think he's had a few too many fights since he's been away. I think he showed in his last fight against Ryder that he needs to move up, doesn't he? But like you were saying a few weeks back, is he scared of moving up? Because you've got... Big trouble, mate. Big trouble. Smith's a good fight, but it's not pay per view. Yeah. I think everybody at 175 beats Callum Smith. I think Anthony Yard beats him. Yeah. Uh, I think that Callum Smith's been very well managed and protected. Yeah, I mean, his best win is, is George Groves. And uh, George Groves are injured, wasn't he? Yeah. So, what's his best win after that? I'd probably say. Rocky Fielding. Rocky Fielding, oh. And Dan. Um. Yeah, you, you dig in after that, are you? For, yeah. For his best um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what he'll, what he'll do next. Uh, you'd probably say like this really much with John Ryder, wouldn't you? I'd like George to see Gallagher. that. Joe Gallagher, when he got asked about this rematch, you weren't happy about it, were you? What about the Ryder rematch? Yeah, happy about that. Flipped his lid, didn't he? Woof, 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 woof. This is how I look at it, right? John Ryder and Callum Smith must happen next, and I'm not interested in Callum Smith. Yeah. I'm not interested unless Joe Gallagher agrees to put Callum in with John Ryder, otherwise, I'm off the Callum Smith hype train. And we're never really on it anyway because he's been, he was wrapped in cotton wool when he was WBC number one. He never wanted to fight Benavides. He never wanted the Anthony Dirrell fight. Uh, and then he. Well, yeah. He pulled out the Dirrell fight to go in the uh, Super Series, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. He didn't want to trouble. He had a WBC title shot. They're ready for him and he didn't want to trouble. Did Callum Smith take step aside money when he was WBC number one? Because this is how I look at it. 
Too many matchroom fighters are getting to WBC number one and then the belly aching saying it's over two years and they've not had the title shot. So have these people had step aside money? Has Dillian White had step aside money? We're not going to get to know, are we? No. No. I mean, Gillian White, people say, now's he's not a title shot, but like you said, he's turning down four or five chances to find them in here, so, and that's how you get a title shot. Yeah. Yeah, so. you're right, mate. Two seconds. I'm just going uh, downstairs with camera. Go on, keep talking, you're right. So, what else do you want to talk about? Well, this, this is how I look at it, right? There's too many people, right? Too many people are... Too many are going the British route, right? Too many are going the British route and they're not... How can I explain it? They're going the British route and they're not going for Europeans. Do you know what I mean? The big one. Yeah, there's a, there's a massive gap. There's a massive gap, and there's too many are not bridging that gap. You know when Frost won British title, he consolidated the belt. He had loads of defences. He had loads of Commonwealth defences, and they had him ready. So when he got to be WEC number one. He were ready for you people like Pascal and people like that, do you know what I mean? I want to see more people I, win a British title and start defending it. You've got to have, right, there's got to be some, uh, there's got to be some consistency in our own people getting a British title and, and not jumping from British to world level because Eddie Hearn whispers in your ear, you're going to get paid. What about these kids' health? Lee Purdy won a British title, right, threw him in with Devon Alexander. Why didn't they try and win a European? You know what I mean? Where? They just get thrown straight in, but it keeps happening, doesn't it? Keeps happening. Nobody's doing nothing about it. It's like Anthony Yard. You want to eat much better than Anthony Yard. You want to what? You want to eat much better than Anthony Yard. You want to eat much better than Anthony Yard. You want to eat much better than Anthony Yard. Yeah, I did, yeah. Anthony Yard, I don't even think he won a British, did he? No, that's what I mean, if he'd have gone British and European. What, did, what belt did he have him, Anthony Yard? Was it an area or an English? I think he won an English and then a WBO European, didn't he? Uh, oh, was it an area then? I'm sure, I think it was a central area, you know, or southern area. Yeah, he Southern area. Then a Frank Warren uh, WBO trinket. But then Kovalev, who, let's have it right, I heard him beat him Ward first time. So he's like, that's what they did to Yard. And what's Anthony Yard done since then? 
After all that, all that where we Frank and he's our man from Tunday of Joy, they might go sign with Frank we Eddie. That's what I reckon. I think I think Anthony Allen's next time will be with uh, Eddie that's my opinion. Dear. Yeah. That's a bold prediction that Cameron. Yeah, I reckon Tyson Fury will end the match. Yeah, I do, yeah. Well, I mean, if he wants to fight Joshua Reddy, why? Which he says he does, uh, often he'll smash him anyway. Well, it's a fight, isn't it? Seriously. Uh, I think that he'd have to be with Matchroom to fight Joshua Reddy. He's not going to do a dual pay per view, is he? And Frank won't budge, so he's going to have to go here the early if he wants Joshua. After this fight, next, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see, you're going to see, uh, Pete, you're going to see some chess moves. You're going to see some big chess moves. That's what you're going to see, mate, trust me. Big chess moves. The, you can forget that, uh, that, Third fight we went. No, if with Wilder, right, beats Fury, Eddie Earn will make his move. If Fury beats Wilder, he won't make a move because Al Heyman will make him stand contract. But, but if if Fury beats, if sorry, if Fury loses the fight with Joshua, is still a 50-50 really, isn't it? Because Joshua's got a loss on his record, hasn't he? Oh. I think Fury, uh, Fury gets. Uh, I thought it's an hard one. It's an hard one. No matter what I say, I'm called a hater. Oh, you're an hater. You beat a Fury's mate. You're gonna go against Tyson. Look, can Tyson stay away for 36 minutes from Wilder landing on him? Now, last time out, he couldn't do it, could he? No. No. So, since then, he's got older Tyson, hasn't he? And Wilder looks to me like he's got better. But Fury, what did he look like in his last fight? Look what? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time and give you your porky fix. Boom, oink, oink. That fight would have been stopped. 19% are committed by people called Colin. Well, Barry Hearn's in the black book, but nobody's coming out and speaking about it. Why are you not mentioning it? Why not? Why?